Hello and welcome back to Nunley Math. I am your host, Aaron Nunley. Um, we have finished our first sequence of lessons on solving equations. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that, got a lot out of that. I know my class is going to be testing on that uh, set of lessons very, very soon. We're going to be moving on to our next unit, which is taking those equations and using them in problem-solving situations. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you that problem-solving is difficult. Um, in fact, most students say that solving word problems is the most challenging thing they have to do in Algebra 1 and actually in mathematics. And it can be quite difficult. But in all honesty, a lot of that is our fault as teachers in that when we do uh, problem solving, um, we don't always teach you how to solve problems. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll give you a lot of equations, we'll give you one or two examples, but then we don't spend a lot of time um, talking about the vocabulary of problem solving and how algebra symbolically represents um, the information you're being given. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a, um, a lesson I call Translating Algebraic Expressions. I have to be honest, it is not the most engaging lesson. It's a lot of vocabulary. Uh, it can be a bit tedious. However, it does some, lay some foundational thoughts for us and give us some vocabulary we're going to need in doing some more challenging and more difficult problems. Now, hopefully as you're viewing this, this is information you've seen before, particularly if you are now in an outborn class, but you may not have seen the ideas expressed in quite this way. So I am going to encourage you to go ahead and watch the entire video. Um, if the earlier slides don't seem um, terribly difficult to you, you might want to skip one or two and go to some more challenging ones. Um, but there is some information here that I, I think has been presented to you, will be presented to you in a way you probably have not seen before that might be useful when we go to the, the next lesson and the lesson after that. The next couple of lessons, actually the next three or four, are some of my favorite. Um, they use some of the information we've received here. It's, it's a unique approach to problem solving that um, I think is going to be extremely valuable to you in your studies. So, uh, without further ado, let's talk about translating algebraic expressions. Now, algebra uses a symbolic language to represent ideas we typically use words for. For example, we use the addition symbol, this plus symbol right here, to represent combining or putting together. But there are lots of other words that mean combining or putting together. The more familiar we are with those words, the easier problem solving becomes for us. Here are some very simple common algebra symbols. Um, the plus sign can be plus, combine, together, sum, more than, or increasing. In every situation, it's always taking one thing and combining it with something else. Now, we also have this idea of subtraction. It's very familiar to us. This idea of subtraction is taking away, reducing, removing. Sometimes we'll use the word less or falling or often finding the difference between two things. I have multiplication words like product, each, times, double, triple, actually using the word times again, I put that in there twice, and the word per or of, those typically are multiplication words. And then we have the division symbol, which represents splitting or dividing things. Sometimes you'll see the word quotient or sharing. Occasionally the word per pops up as a division word as well. We can talk about that a little bit down the road. Most of this is probably familiar to you. However, it might be worth grabbing a screenshot of this chart um, to, to use as you're solving problems down the road, just in case you get, um, get mixed up or forget what some of the words mean. Now, this symbolic language allows us to take ideas that are normally expressed in words and show them symbolically. Things that we don't know are assigned variables, which are letters or symbols that represent values that are unknown or that can change. So, when I give you a problem like the sum of a number and seven, I can translate that very easily by remembering that this word sum is talking about putting things together or addition. So this says add a number I don't know, we'll call that x, and a seven. Add x and seven, and of course addition is that plus sign, x plus seven. Not terribly complex if you realize that the word sum always means putting together or addition and that the word a number refers to an unknown value, which I've called x. It's not terribly important that you use x. You can also use a, b, c, d. Just about any letter can be used as a variable. Consider this. 
I have 27 candies split into three piles. 27 candies split into three piles. This word split, when I see that, it's telling me to do one of those four operations. Hopefully you know it's division. So when I read this, what this is actually saying is take 25 or 27 and divide by 3. 27 divided by 3 is a literal translation of what that says. Ava and Mason's fish combined. This word combined should bring to mind a particular operation. Hopefully you realize it's addition. This is saying add Ava's fish to Mason's. And since it's addition, I just use a plus sign. Notice, since I don't know how many fish Ava has, and I don't know how many fish Mason has, I just use variables for those. So maybe Ava has 5 and Mason has 7, which would be a total of 12. Or Ava has 9 and Mason has 1, which would be a total of 10. I don't know those values, so I just use letters to represent them. Triple last week's earnings. The word triple is an interesting word because it not only means an operation, but it also means a number. Triple means multiply by 3. So this one says take last week's earnings and multiply it by 3, giving you 3 times e. Notice we don't normally write the times if, the, if it's a number right next to a variable. Uh, again, I used e for earnings because that reminds me um, of what I'm talking about, but that is not a requirement. You could have easily used x or n or m or anything else. Consider this, the difference between the heights. The difference between the heights. The word difference hopefully reminds you of subtraction. So this is saying subtract the two heights. Now, if I'm subtracting the two heights, I don't necessarily know that those heights are the same. I don't know what they are. They could be the same or they could be very, very different. So when I do this, I have several different ways I could express that. Some people just say x for the first height, y for the second height, and they subtract those. Other people like to stick to h for height, but they want to call this h sub 1 minus h sub 2. This just indicates that those are two different variables. They are not the same height. Or some people do the same thing using a capital H and a lowercase h. This is the larger height, take away the smaller height. Any of those are acceptable ways to represent this relationship. The population increased by a thousand. Hopefully you recognize that the word increase means addition. So this is telling us to add a thousand to the population. Or P plus, that should be 1,000. Got a little typo in there I need to fix. It should be P plus 1,000. Let's see if I can do this pointer options pin. See if I can make an extra zero there. There you go. That's all better. P plus 1,000. I will go ahead and make a correction on that um, before I put this on to teachers, pay teachers. Now, there are some special words that make specific changes to a problem as well. These are the words that tend to make the problems a little more challenging. Like the word than. Most people, even those who feel as though they're pretty good at problem solving, don't realize that the word than has a very specific job. It means switch the order in the operation. So, for example, if I say 3 less 10, and I say 3 less than 10, those mean very different things. 3 less 10 tells me take 3, remove 10 from it. Remember, less is a subtraction word. But if I say 3 less than 10, I'm saying start with the 10 and remove 3 from that. Notice, those would give us very different answers. This would give us a negative 7. This would give us a positive 7. Than has that one job, switching the orders. So that if I said to you, 7 less than Colin, 7 less than Colin, what I'm doing is saying, take Collins and subtract 7. Notice the second typo. Wow, this is awful. Colin, take away 7. Or if I were to say to you, a number less than Devin, notice I have a number, a minus, and I have Devon. But the word than says switch which of those is going to come first. 
So rather than saying a number minus Devon, what I'm saying is take Devon and subtract a number. 15 more than trace. Hopefully you know that 15 is the number 15. More should remind us of a certain operation. This is addition. I don't know how much trace has, so he is T. But notice the word than. The word than, get some glitches here on my computer. The word than says that rather than the 15 coming first, the T should come first. So this literally says T plus 15. Now, hopefully you realize that addition is commutative, so really if you had not switched it, it would not have been a problem. The word than is particularly important when dealing with subtraction because subtraction is not commutative. The other word I want to make you aware of is the word percent. Percent is actually a combination of the word per, which is a division word, and the word cent, which is a prefix meaning 100. So when I use the word percent, I'm really saying how many out of 100. 20% of 1,000 says 20, percent says out of 100. Of, you'll remember, is a multiplication word, and you have 1,000. Now, some people don't like those fractions. Instead of saying 20 over 100, we like to turn that into the decimal, 20 hundredths. That's perfectly acceptable as well. In either case, 20% of 1,000 is 200. So when I say 15% of the meal price, I'm saying 15 out of or divided by 100 of, remember is a multiplication word, the meal price. So times m. Or if you prefer, instead of doing 15 over 100, you could do this as 15 hundredths a decimal times m as well. 40% of the race, this is 40 out of 100. Remember, of means times. Race is unknown. This could be the length of the race. Um, that's my best best guess on is it's the distance of the race. Not really per, uh, particularly important because it is an unknown value. I would do this as 40 out of 100, or 40 divided by 100 times, remember of is a times word, the race, or if you prefer 0 0.40, 40 uh, hundredths of the race. Last one, 10% increase in the price. This is actually just a little bit um, tricky because this is saying not just 10%, but a 10% increase, a 10% increase in the price. We have to be very, very careful here because this implies several things. It implies that we're taking the original price, the original price is growing, which means addition, and it's growing by 10% of itself. In this case, what that would say is P plus 10, wow, riddled with typos, say 10 out of 100, 10% of P. Or if you prefer, the price plus 10% of itself. This phrase percent increase is going to become increasingly important as we work our way through this unit. You might want to take a second and make sure you understand this. It's the original price increased by 10% of itself. Or if you prefer the decimal, you could use that as well. Now, I have one more set of symbols, actually two more sets of symbols I want to talk about. The, the next one is the use of equality symbols. Equality symbols. Equality symbols allow us to compare two expressions or two items. Notice that the equality symbols are typically the predicate or the verb of the sentence, predicate or verb phrase. This is something no, nobody ever bothered to tell me. I finally figured it out after several years of teaching. I was looking for ways to make this easier, and I found that this is extremely helpful. It says, Joel has three more chickens than Colin. Joel has three more chickens than Colin. Notice the word has here. The word has is a verb. It's actually a, uh, what is that, a linking verb? A linking verb. It's saying that Joel 
or Joel's chickens are the same as Colin's chickens plus three. Notice the expression over here, three more chickens than Colin. This word has is allowing us to compare Joel's chickens to Colin's chickens. So when I go to write my phrase, I'm going to go through and say, Joel, I don't know how many chickens he has, so he's going to be a variable. If I can draw a variable with my mouse, J. Has is my verb, so it's going to be the same as. Three is just the number three. More is an increase word. Colin I don't know either. Oh, there's this word than in here as well. Do you remember than's job? Than switches the order on our operation. So when I look at this and see 3 plus C, the word than tells me I need to switch that around. Joel has, Joel has Collins and three more. He is the same as Colin and then it increases by three. See how that works? This equal sign helps separate Joel's from the relationship that's equal to Joel's. We'll try this again. I think that's extremely helpful. Liam eats seven more worms than CJ. I find the word eat. I know that's going to be my equal sign because that's my verb. Liam's worms, I don't know how many he eats. Seven more than CJ. Seven's a number. More is addition. CJ is unknown as well. That's C. Notice the word than tells me to switch my order. So in this case, the problem is saying that the number Liam eats is the same as CJ's and seven more. Liam eats seven more than CJ. Braden runs twice as far as Brady. Can you do that one? Brady, Braden's distance is the same as two times Brady's distance. Put a little I in here. What's that look like as an equation? You might want to pause and try that on your own. Braden equals two times Brady. Notice I used X because I didn't want to confuse Braden and Brady. That's fine. Um, I could have used a lowercase b as well. The important thing is that runs was my verb which tells me where my equal sign goes. Danielle has three more than double the number of pets that Menar has. Why don't you try that one on your own real quick? Now that you've tried that, think of it this way. Danielle has the same as two times Menar and then three more. Notice the word has. This is my verb. That tells me where my equal sign goes. Danielle is equal to two times Menar and three more. Kofi lifts the same weight as Jacob and Caleb combined. Can you write that one? You might want to pause the video. I did K equals J plus C. Last one. Lauren scores 30 more goals than Sydney. Why don't you pause the video and try that one? Your verb, of course, is scores. That tells you where your equal sign goes. Lauren equals 30 more is plus. Van says to switch the order. Sydney. So Sydney plus 30. Last set of symbols. These are grouping symbols. They change the order of operations. Grouping symbols are used when two operations appear together. For example, if I say 5 times the sum of a number and 10, 5 times the sum of a number of and 10, notice multiplication and addition are appearing together. What this is telling me is I'm going to take 5 and multiply it by the solution to a number and 10. The word sum says I'm taking 5 times something that's already added together. That means in my order of operations the n plus 10 must come first. 5 times n plus 10. Notice the parentheses or grouping symbols tell me to do that first. Try this one. Half the difference between a number and 3. Notice half is both the fraction 1 half. It also means times. Half of the difference 
between a number and three. Since it's half the difference, difference of course meaning subtraction, I'm supposed to take one half times something that is already subtracted, or the solution to the number minus three. Half n minus three. Four times the total coins held by Brianna and Drew. Notice four times the total. That word total uh, implies that something has already been added. So I need to do the addition first. Four times the solution to find the total of Brianna and Drew. Or four times B plus D. Add Brianna and Drew together first, then multiply by the four. The length is double the sum of the width and the height. Do you see the two operations there together? Double, that means two times. The sum, something that's already added. I need to do the adding first, then multiply by two. Or the length is two times the solution to the width plus the height. Two times the quantity, W plus H. Notice the parentheses tell us what to do first. Half of the number minus 10. Can you do that one on your own? I got a little tricky there. Notice this just says half of a number minus 10, but there is no second operation telling us to do the subtraction first. Half of the difference of a number in 10 would say do the subtraction first. Since there was nothing there indicating that the subtraction had already been done, I just followed normal order of operations. That was kind of mean, wasn't it? Last one. This year I earned five dollars more than double last year. Five dollars more than double. Notice this more than double right here is two things, two operations. There's an addition, more than, and a multiplication, double. So this would be five plus double last year equals this year. But keep in mind, order of operations says I do multiplication first anyway. So really, that those parentheses are not necessary. They are stated here in the problem, but I don't necessarily need that symbol because it would be done anyway. Now, we can put all this together and I can come up with increasingly difficult problems. Can you translate this? Ella smiles twice as often as Will and Liz combined. Twice as often as Will and Liz combined. Notice, I'm doing twice twice the combination. That means the combination, the addition, had to be done first. Also notice since Ella smiles, smiles is a verb which tells me where my equal sign goes. Ella equals two times the addition happened first. Here's one. Ava works for four hours less than the sum of Grant and Pierce. You might want to pause the video and try this one. Notice works is a verb. That's my equal sign. I don't know how many hours Ava works. I do know I can't use this mouse very well. It says four hours less than the sum. This phrase less than the sum says that it has to be added first, then remove four hours from that. Notice the word than is going to change my order. So find the sum then subtract the four. Looks like this. Now, order of operations says that addition would be done from left to right anyway, so we really don't need those parentheses. Shush's salary is the same as Evans less Gavin's. Notice this phrase, is the same as, that's your equal sign. And one more. Menard's salary this year is a 9% increase over last year. Notice this is a percent increase. I know that's going to be tricky. Notice it says her salary is, there's my equal sign. So Menard's salary this year, I think I'm going to use an M on that one, equals a 9% increase over last year. Since it's a percent increase, I have last year plus nine one hundredths of last year. This is my starting amount plus nine percent of that amount gives me the total. Or if you prefer this as a decimal, nine hundredths would look like that. Hopefully you found this useful. I know this can be a little bit tedious. Um, 
but I think there's some really good information in there. As we go into more and more challenging application problems, I think you're going to find we're going to refer back to this information quite a bit. Um, if this has been helpful to you, you know, please feel free to like and subscribe. Leave some comments in the comment section as to how I can improve these videos. Uh, please keep watching. Watch in order because it is developmental. It does grow and build on itself. One last uh, word of encouragement to you from The Rock. Three choices in life. Give up, give in, or give it your all. Never go halfway. Always give your all to anything and everything you're doing. Thanks for watching. Best of luck.